In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Other family, first, a preliminary note. I was away Monday through Friday, two days of travel and three days in Seattle, of all places, where I went to a group of longtime friends to bring grace to a diocese deprived of the sacraments. And during my absence, I, I heard from some people from all over who were worried that I, I had been silenced and, I don't know, put out to pasture. But it's true, a week ago Friday, Bishop Callahan did pay me a visit because he has heard from some who, like those against Jeremiah in the first reading, denounced me. So for what might be the 20th time I've said so, please give thanks to Bishop Callahan, who did not question the truth of things spoken. It's hard to argue, after all, against the truth, but essentially asked that I tone down politics, whatever that means. And for the record, as to the many out there who complain about politics, they are entirely ignorant of the meaning of separation of church and state. As Reagan put it so perfectly, the Constitution was never meant to prevent people from praying. Its declared purpose was to protect their freedom to pray. Similarly, the Constitution was never meant to prevent Christian shepherds, Christian past pastors from speaking in or about the public square its declared purpose was protect our freedom to speak in the public square. Don't hold your breath waiting for the ineffective U.S. CCB to do anything about it. They've had 56 years since the Johnson Amendment under every possible combination of political parties. And I've yet to hear of a single lawsuit to protect the pastors. And judging by the horrific caving to the bureaucrats under the COVID hoax, nothing useful will come out of it anytime soon. Memo to the USCCB. When it comes, when it takes Protestant pastors and finally some great bishops in, let me see, Minnesota, that way, to sue the godless government for equal rights as Walmart and Menards, then as a famous movie line goes, Houston, we've got a problem. That is the glory of the recent presidential executive order. Its purpose was to protect Christian pastors in the public square and protect you, the faithful, Christian faithful themselves in all aspects of your life, including employment. The great Archbishop Viganò, who exposed the great McCarrick cover-up in the church, he supported it. Why is the USCCB nowhere to be found? Where was the Archbishop of D.C.? Oh, yeah, that's right. His schedule was too busy. It is nothing other than insidious buffoonery amongst laity and clergy alike for anyone to criticize it. But don't hold your breath waiting for the USCCB to speak up and speak out in favor of an order that for the first time since 1964 protects the Catholic priests, protects the Catholic pastors, protects you, the faithful. Don't hold your breath. Your family, the fact is that the public square pretty much became a fixture of civilized society because of the Catholic Church. The public square actually refers to the town square, or also known as like a piazza, in front of the church and around which was built the whole rest of the town. That's the public square in front of the church. There never was a time in America until Lyndon Johnson pulled his stunt that the voice of the pastor was silenced in the public square. Yet we know very well, dear family, that truly faithful and courageous pastors did comment in the public square, even when, like in Mexico in the 1920s or in Germany in the 1930s and 40s, they paid for it with their blood. In fact, as I mentioned before, this glorious Polish pastor, I was actually at his church on Corpus Christi in Poland, in Warsaw, and 250,000 people participated in the Corpus Christi procession. I was starting in his church. The blessed Jerzy Popiolusko, who was murdered by the Polish version of the KGB just for speaking the truth publicly. 
If you can understand that simple fact that pastors always spoke out against evil people in the government, like in Mexico and in Germany and in Poland and elsewhere, then you know deep within, no matter how the antichrists try to twist it, that it is our duty and our salvation to speak up against evil in the public square. That's not my opinion. Jesus said it in today's gospel. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, including in the public square, I will acknowledge before my heavenly father. But here's the scary part. Whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly father. How much denial has been coming from, from Catholic pulpits over the last, what is it, for, what did I say, 46, 56 years since Johnson pulled his stunt. The apostles certainly did what Jesus told them to do, even amidst, you'll recall, persecution and martyrdom by the same civil authority that had ordered them not to speak up and speak out. So amen, I say to you, if every Catholic bishop and every Christian pastor actually was united in truth, and there is only one truth, none would be afraid to speak up and speak out. If only every shepherd in the church was brave enough to stand up and say, so I'm gonna organize a peaceful protest in my church because the holy sacrifice of the mass actually is more important than a two by four at Menards. And the fact that they do not, dear family, should give us the greatest pause. So tell me, dear family, do we follow the example of Jesus and the holy apostles and the martyrs in Mexico and Germany and blessed Yerji Popio Yushko? Or do we hide like cowards, tails between our legs in shame of our faith? Do we preach the truth in season and out of season? Or do we bide our time until hellfire comes upon us exactly as our blessed mother warned us it would? In the midst of this crazy time, in this, the last three, four months, crazy. In the midst of this crazy time, what did we get out of the USCCB? It was about 53 numbered paragraphs to do this and don't do that, or you will not be allowed to celebrate the Holy Mass. So I went to visit faithful Catholics in Seattle who have been so deprived of the Holy Mass and the sacraments because certain persons in both civil and ecclesial authority feared a virus from which as many as 99.75% of people survived, the vast majority with little or no symptoms at all. It cannot be said that I went up there to straighten those people out because there's no straightening, straightening out many of them, but there are a few who are faithful Catholics and it was to some of them I went to share the grace as to the many who throw their own grievous fault, have the audacity to buy into what the mayor calls a summer of love. They reject the gospel of Christ and in the words of St. Paul apply, anathema sit. Now on to our sacred scriptures of the day as you relate to fathers. For this is the Sunday when we commemorate our earthly fathers. We commemorate those fathers who consistent with the image and likeness of St. Joseph, of the Holy Family, guard and protect their spouses and their children and personally sacrifice themselves to provide for them in all their temporal and spiritual needs. On this Sunday, then, let us give thanks to our Heavenly Father who through his Son and through his Son's Holy Family showed men how to be fathers in his image and likeness. How providential it is then that on this weekend, as we contemplate genuine and holy fatherhood, that we have such sacred scripture, which affirms for us examples of spiritual holy fathers like Jeremiah, the Psalmist and St. Paul. We hear from the great and holy prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many Terror on every side. Denounce. Let us denounce him. Why? Because he spoke the truth. We hear from the psalmist. For your sake, I bear insult and shame covers my face. 
I become an outcast to my brothers. Why? Because he spoke the truth. When we hear from St. Paul, sin entered the world and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men inasmuch as all sinned. And then most of all, we hear from Jesus. Fear no one. And do not be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid. It wasn't that he just did, that he said, just don't be afraid. He said, be, don't be afraid of those who can kill just the body. Then he said, but be very much afraid. Be very afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. But we today, dear family, can see more fully and more clearly what Jeremiah saw. Terror on every side. We today can see more and more clearly what St. Paul saw, that sin has most definitely entered the world. As an aside, so I'm up in Seattle, right, talking to a bunch of people, some with great inside information on what's going on. So watch out for the next couple months. Do you know, do you know sex trafficking of children soon will be, perhaps even this year, a, a source of more profiteering than the entire drug trade? The horror that is going on, and we don't even know, in Hollywood, in our politics, sometimes even in the church, it's, I, won't, I can't even say it from the pulpit. The horror, the sin that has entered the world is beyond description. I've seen the pictures. I've seen the videos. It is so horrible, you can't possibly imagine. Sin has entered the world. We can see it more and more clearly. Fasten your seatbelts. The next two months should be interesting. And we today can see more clearly what the psalmist saw, that we must bear insult and shame heaped upon us by the sinners. What a brilliant compilation of sacred scripture of our spiritual fathers as we commemorate our own fathers who, after the image and likeness of the Holy Family, guard and protect their spouses and their children and personally sacrifice themselves to provide for them because they knew what Jesus told us in the gospel, that we fear no one. We shall not be afraid of anyone or anything that can kill the body, but only fear anyone or anything that can kill the soul, which is why we can recognize the evil inherent in the many ways in which our culture attacks the holy image of the Holy Father. First and foremost, we know that God created exactly two genders, male and female. The male, the man, is the father. And the female, the woman, is the mother. And we know exactly what is the image of the Holy Family. Man, father, woman, mother, and children, period. There is no other image given to man by Almighty God as to what constitutes a holy family. Anything else, any other configuration is not in the image of the holy family. But, oh, Father, some object. My family is not intact, but I do okay. Well, dear family, let us be clear. Okay is not the standard to which we are called. God created us to be the best, the best that we can be. And his image of what constitutes the best, that for which we should strive, is exemplified in the holy family, man, father, woman, mother, and children. So to all those people out there who reject this as the image and likeness of God's perfection, from laity to clergy to bishops and some German cardinals, have the integrity to turn in your Catholic or Christian card and quit being a pretender. Your family in our country, in our culture, and around the world, this image and likeness has been attacked and almost destroyed by the diabolical and pervasive anti-male, anti-masculine, anti-father world. As we pondered before on Epiphany, you can see the clear and insidious godlessness in the media, which has denigrated man and, and, and masculinity and fatherhood over the past 70 years. Remember, 
how we pondered. Starting about 1950, the presentation of family on TV was exemplified by the TV show, Father Knows Best. How that father, Jim Anderson, was portrayed as a thoughtful man who offered sage advice and wise advice whenever one of his children had a problem. And remember how the Anderson family itself was characterized as truly an idealized family, that the, the sort that the viewers could relate to and emulate. And then we fast forwarded just 20 years to the 70s, where the most popular depiction of family on TV was the show All in the Family. Remember how that father, Archie Bunker, was an outspoken, narrow-minded man, seemingly prejudiced against everyone who was not like him or, or his idea of how people should be. So TV went from Jim Anderson of Father's Knows Best to Archie Bunker of All in the Family, where a bigoted husband would call his wife a dingbat. And TV Guide nevertheless ranked that All in the Family as the fourth greatest show of all time. And Bravo named Archie Bunker TV's greatest character of all time. And then we fast forwarded it to just 20 more years to 1989 to another TV show depicting family, a show that Time Magazine named the 20th century's best TV show. The show was, in, was that cartoon called The Simpsons. Homer Simpson was the father. He's characterized as having a careless, buffoonish personality. And amazingly enough, I just saw this yesterday, the Simpsons just concluded its 31st season and will continue adding to its record as the longest running sitcom in history when it starts season number 32 in September. It reflects the truth of our culture that we go from Jim Anderson to Archie Bunker to Homer Simpson in many of our lifetimes. Dear family, the attack on men, on masculinity, on fatherhood, is in full force. And, not surprisingly, all the birds of a feather flock together and they all march together on this one. Remember the Women's March in Washington, which in itself is a joke. They weren't representing all women, but just this radical feminist side who, unlike marchers for life, left the place a disgusting mess to clean up. And many parade, you'll remember this, Many paraded down the streets in vile costumes of women's body. It was vile. Remember how one of their featured speakers was Donna Hilton, who spent time in prison after her three convictions of murder in the second degree and two counts of kidnapping in the first degree for her role in the kidnapping, rape, torture, and murder of a homosexual man. She got a free pass from the godless media on that. But did you see the, the way the media, the godless media, went after that decent family man, Brett Kavanaugh, based on a twisted interpretation of his high school yearbook who, and demonstrably false allegations by Christine Ford, who couldn't even get her own allegations straight. They didn't match up with history. Not a single corroborating witness. In fact, some witnesses said it wasn't true. They were there. That the media and the radicals dared to justify the attack on Kavanaugh with their new mantra, women need to be heard, a mantra which suddenly went out the window entirely when applied to their own pro-abortion presidential candidate. What a joke. So birds of a feather against men and masculinity include the real radicals, the female abortionists, who march alongside criminal illegals and all the looters and burners that have plagued our country for over a month now. And of course, the Rainbow Coalition, whose rejection of God-created masculinity is exemplified, is exemplified by the costumes flaunted in pride parades. Even though we as Catholics know pride is one of our seven deadly sins. It is not for nothing that God's law is pretty clear on this issue, quote, a woman shall not wear a man's garment, nor shall a man put on women's clothing. For anyone who does such things is an abomination to the Lord, your God. What part of Jesus did not come to abolish 
the smallest part of a letter of the law or the prophets do they not get? That teaching is lost on ESPN entirely, which gave the Courage Award to Bruce Jenner prancing across the stage in a white dress. What a joke. And then let's throw in the climate change hoax, which denigrates paternity and being a father to children as contributing to overpopulation. As you've heard me say, listen, God decides when we have too many people on the planet, not us. God plans parenthood, not that abomination a block up the street. And you readily can see how one of God's two genders, maleness, masculinity, and fatherhood has been so profoundly attacked by the godless media, the atheists, the pagans, and worst of all, fake Christians outside the church and inside the church. Meanwhile, Donna Hilton gets a free pass. What a joke. And now, dear family, the godless amongst us have delivered a master stroke in the COVID hoax that allows a thousand people in Walmart, but only nine in a Catholic cathedral. Now, every single one of them, the abortionists, the looters, the burners, the women must be heard, the pride and sin and the climate change hoaxers are all bonded together by the COVID hoaxers who think it's A-OK to have a thousand people in Walmart without masks, but again, not okay to have nine or 10 people in a Catholic cathedral who think it's okay, a-okay, for tens of thousands of looters and burners to crowd, to, to crowd together in maniacal mobs and call that a peaceful protest, but not okay for a well-behaved presidential rally. Your family would pretty much would have to be brain dead to not recognize that the attack on men on masculinity, on fatherhood, has been a disaster for our country and around the world. And it does in fact underlie the current burning and looting. The truth of the matter is this, who is doing the looting and burning? Look at the, fo vi the video footage given to us even by the godless media. Antifa gets it all going. We kind of know they're these agent provocateurs. Antifa is a terrorist, domestic terrorist organization. They have been identified so by the government. Antifa's there. You can recognize them all in black. But who's doing the looting and burning? The fatherless. Here's a true story. A Catholic deacon and good friend of mine went to do some prison ministry. And there was a man from the inner city of Chicago in the county jail for violating his conditions of his parole after his live-in girlfriend turned him in. In the course of trying to counsel this inmate, the deacon came to understand that the man had nine children back in Chicago, as it turns out, from several different women. So, so the deacon tried to encourage him to make better choices because his children depended upon him to support them so that when he got out, he could be a supportive father to them. And the guy got mad. He said, what do you mean? My children are well taken care of by the government. They get their welfare checks every month. So they have food and clothing and school. What kind of mentality is that? The fact is that in 2014 to 2018, the share of families headed by single parents was 75% among black, that's a staggering figure. Three quarters, 75% amongst black families, 58% amongst Hispanic families, 37% among white families, and 21% among Asian families. Dear family, that is damnable fact. It is an utter disgrace. And if you want to know the single most important factor against, amongst failure to thrive economically, the single most important factor for poverty, it's not race, it's fatherlessness. If you want to know the single most important factor in the life of drugs and alcohol and crime, it is not race, it is fatherlessness, period. And it is the plain and simple fact that if a father does not lead the family to faith, then something like 90% of children abandon the faith when they leave home. 
In no amount of any of those birds of a feather marching together, angry, hostile, and violent towards men, masculinity, and fatherhood, is going to solve the problem of poverty, drug and alcohol abuse, crime and imprisonment, and the grace that comes through faith, until they look in the mirror and say, we are our own worst enemy. We are the problem, and we are not working on a solution, and no amount of government hands outs is going to fix it. Dear family, that is the truth on this Father's Day, and the truth hurts. People never admit to the truth because it hurts. Instead, when you speak the truth, as it was in Jeremiah's time, so it is in ours. Tell the truth, and this is what happens. I hear the whisperings of many. Terror on every side. Denounce. Let us denounce him. But when we emulate the glorious spiritual fathers of our church history, when we hear those whisperings, let us always recall the words Jesus said to the 12, fear no one. Fear no one who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Your family, as is obvious, we have a call to answer, a job to do from coast to coast in every state of this union. And that is to do as Jesus said to do. When I see, say to you, what I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops and do not be afraid when you do. And we must do what Jesus, we must do this because of what Jesus said right after. Everyone who acknowledges me before the Father, before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.